My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Jesus is a shepherd who cares for us, who holds us fast and who will never, ever let us go. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, here in the Church of the Good Shepherd, we share this good news today as we confirm or receive into the Episcopal Church those who have prepared. Because of the pandemic and the ways that it changed daily and weekly and, in fact, yearly habits, you haven't had a visit from a bishop on a Sunday in four years. It's a delight for me to be here, though I have been here twice in that time, once for a diocesan listening session that you hosted, and once for services of ordination to the priesthood, individual services in here with only 10 people in the room on a very snowy, cold day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your support of the life of the wider church in those ways and your continuing support. Well, on this Good Shepherd Sunday, we celebrate the news that Jesus is our shepherd. It's wonderful news, but it's not the most accessible news. It's not the most accessible image for suburban Americans who don't live with sheep, <laughs> many of whom have never seen a sheep up close and personal. <laughs> So let's get at this same idea that Jesus was up to in this image and that the early church was. Let's look at another image that brings the intersection of Good Shepherd Sunday here at Good Shepherd Church, brings it into intersection with Mother's Day, which is today. The image comes from the great Bobby McFerrin the singer, poet, and songwriter, he wrote a song based on Psalm 23, a version of which we just sang in the hymn before and around the gospel. So listen to Bobby McFerrin's lyrics. You may have heard this marvelous piece of his. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all I need. She makes me lie down in green meadows. Beside the still water she will lead. She restores my soul. She rights my wrongs. She leads me in a path of good things and fills my heart with songs. Even though I walk through a dark and dreary land, there is nothing that can shake me. She said she won't forsake me. I'm in her hands. She sets a table before me in the presence of my foes. She anoints my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely, surely goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will live in her house forever, forever and ever. Well, Bobby McFerrin, who grew up in New York City and went to high school in Los Angeles, doesn't have experience with sheep and shepherds, but he sure does know about love. He experienced God's redeeming love, God's fierce protectiveness and abiding presence in the love of his very own mother who inspired this song. Now we're used to the image of God as Father. We hear it in scripture as we did again today from Jesus' lips. We pray to God our Father in the Lord's Prayer. And we can experience God's love for us in the protecting, providing love of a healthy dad the familiar image of God as Father, 
doesn't mean that God is literally male, though. God made most of God's creatures, not all, but most, with gender. But God, the creator, is not part of creation and is not subject to created categories. God isn't male or female. God isn't non-binary. God is love. That's why we celebrate the love of God as the love of a healthy mother today. The prophet Isaiah did that very thing centuries ago. In the last chapter of the book of Isaiah, we read, thus says the Lord, you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees as a mother comforts his child so I will comfort you, says the Lord. And the psalmist in the humbly simple Psalm 31 sings, O Lord, I am not proud. I have no haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters or with things that are too hard for me. But I still my soul and make it quiet like a child upon its mother's breast. My soul is quieted within me. O Israel, wait for the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. And of course, Jesus himself compared his love to a mother's love. He stood over Jerusalem just days before he was crucified, and he cried, saying, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those that are sent to it. How often I've desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. Jesus' love for us, scripture says again and again, is like the ferocious love of a mother who holds us tight and won't let us be snatched out of her hands. Like a mother, Jesus suffered pain and spilled his own blood to give us life. Like a mother, Jesus feeds us with his very own body. Like a mother, Jesus heals and comforts us, challenges us, and pushes us to do our best. Like a mother, Jesus welcomes us home. It's all about love. A love so fierce, a love so strong, that nothing can snatch us from its grasp. In this season of so much disruption in our lives, we need to tap into this love. We're so done with this pandemic, and it keeps showing us that it's not yet done with us. Infection rates are up again, though hospitalization and death rates are declining, people are still dying a disproportionate number of them persons of color. The political divide in our nation seems to keep growing and widening so that, as a colleague put it to me the other day, our whole country seems to have moved inside the beltway. <laughs> the racial reckoning that's been needed for generations is bearing fruit as more and more people take part in sacred ground circles and in courageous conversations about race. And still we are so far from embodying Jesus' love in the face of our differences. There are so many places in our communities where Jesus' love 
feels absent. In those places, Jesus' loving heart, the heart of a mother, is the first to break. When we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus, like a mother, is there with us. Jesus walks with us, grieves with us, and then Jesus does even more. Jesus brings life out of death, hope out of despair, forgiveness out of brokenness, light out of darkness. Jesus, our mother, our brother, our savior, does all this out of unquenchable love. The entire world is dying for this love. As strange as the idea of, of Jesus as mother might be to some people when they hear it, even more strange is the truth that God is love for many people in our world. And not just for people who have no faith, but also for people who grew up in traditions that focus solely on God as rule giver, account keeper, and punisher. So many people out there don't know the good news that we proclaim today, that Jesus is love, that God is love. And so we've got work to do to show that love, to live that love as a mother cares for her children, as a father cares for his children, as God cares for everyone God loves. And that means everyone, everyone, everyone without exception. You in this place continued your proclamation of God's love even through the pandemic. You pivoted and learned new technologies. You continue to live stream even now. The photos and stories on your website show faithful outreach to people in need whose lives were even more and are even more impacted by COVID than the lives of most of us in this room. They show masked and joyful gatherings of people right here for community, for growth in faith, and for good fun. You have been stretched and challenged in these past two years, and you have chosen again and again to be vessels of God's love. Well done, good and faithful servants. And now on this Good Shepherd Sunday, on this Mother's Day, continue to make it known to the world that God is love. Make it known by the way you love, not just your mother, and your family and your friends, but strangers. By the way you love those who are most different from you, those who are most difficult to love. As you walk the way of love, remember that you are held in loving arms that will never, ever let you go and then go out and be those fierce, loving, mothering arms for others in this world that is dying, dying for real, true, and abiding love. Amen.